Stand by for a conversation between DJ Fresh, DJ Spoo, Robert Marawa, Thibaut Touch, Trevor Gumby, and me in just a short while on cliffcentral.com. Hashtag Pure Conversations. Welcome to Pure Conversations. I'm Trevor Gumby. Welcome. Yeah, so, uh, Pure Conversations. Uh, this all started with uh, me a couple of weeks ago uh, tweeting what my dream lineup on radio would look like. Okay, and we've got the legends in the building. Most of them came. Uh, my heroes, uh, people that didn't come. Um, Bonang, uh, first of all, I had mentioned her in my uh, lineup, and apparently Bonang does not want to do radio anymore, which I find very weird because I mean, radio station, there's so many CD covers for her to use, but she didn't come wow. through. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Robert Marawa is on his way. Uh, I absolutely love him. I consider him uh, the Luther Vandross of radio. Okay. Not no, not oh. cause, no, not because of his uh, silky voice, but because of his flu- no, his fluctuating weight. You know, it's like his wow. relationship with his employers. It's always up or down. You know. You don't want to give him a heart attack. Stop. Oh yeah, he might have with all those clogged arteries, eh? Wow. <laughs> Who are you? One of my favorite people is in the building. Tebow Touch. My man. I have, I have no idea how Tebow Touch managed to get fired from Metro because he had a killer drive time show. And all I can think about is that he spoke Vanek in his American accent and Cloudy <laughs> just didn't understand him. So he had to go, you know. But I, 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 I like how you picked up so quickly, you know. It's testament to the hustler that you are and how so, how fast you adapt to things. Like you were stuck in New York for 10 minutes and you still can't shake that accent. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to watch. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, DJ Smoo. Oh, one of the loves of my life. So I had to fill his boots because we did um, uh, the TV show. Friends Fri- like these. Friends like these, yeah. you know. Hold so, on, hold on. So Trevor's like that guy that's the best man at your wedding and he's looking at your wife. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. See, now, now this, is, this is the thing. Many people don't know, but DJ Swoo and I have so much in common because we both fucked Zahara. Wow. Oh, me, it was romantically. You, you, it was financially. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think it was a mistake <laughs> to ask him to start. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you, you can call that long laugh lol <laughs> oh, Fresh, come on, man. This is the thing about DJ Fresh. He is the most lovable person ever. He's like the biggest teddy bear ever. You are so lovable. And you know what? We, we all, all of South Africa woke up to the news that you had been fired for using an imaginary made up word. Yeah, Soonery. Yeah. That makes no sense. It's ridiculous. It's like expecting your chicken legs to hold up that body. I wow. mean, <laughs> it's surprising that somebody so structurally unsound is the best bet in radio right now. It's, it's the most shocking thing. And last but not least, Gareth Cliff. Thank you for hosting us, brother. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, most people think Gareth Cliff is an asshole, but... <laughs> You He's know. not, you know. I, I I worked here at Cliff Central. I had the highest rated show, above his. X rated. Okay, and yeah. he didn't fire me. He didn't fire me. Even when I brought open beverages into the studio, he didn't fire me. He just like secretly came and gave me free drugs in all my drinks. <laughs> do you, that is, do you, do you still? Oh, do you still work here? <laughs> he used to be an addict. I forgot. <laughs> Many Man. would argue. What do you mean still? What is done? Well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, guys, basically, you guys are legends of radio. Uh, many people don't fi- uh, can't find it in their heads why you guys have moved around so much, and um, why can't we have all of you on one radio station? Because that would be a killer lineup. Is it egos? Is it the price tag? Uh, is it the industry that doesn't want a killer station? And I'd like you guys to talk about that because all of South Africa wants to know. 
Well, uh, it was a bad idea to have Trevor Gumby start this thing, obviously. <laughs> Whose idea was this? It was mine. I apologize. Right. But then I also once put him on the air, and it was the most offensive stuff I've ever heard in my life. Why is the white guy hosting this? Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. It is a problem. It's like the inverse of government. When are we decolonizing <laughs> Cliff Central? <Hey. laughs> didn't Timo charge? No, they tried. Didn't he try that? He was the BE partner, uh, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. Stellenbosch Mafia. Oh. This, is, this is Soweto Mafia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard that rumor about you being in bed with the Ruperts. Or was that Stain? I, I forget. Which one was it? It's both. I like both? everything in twos. So. Why are you whining, man? Uh, no, because, man, nothing's happening for me, man. It's well, like I, I don't have this job. I do. SABC is playing repeats. You got friends like these? No, they're playing repeats. They played your episode last week. Are you week. still there? Man. You got All fired right. as well. well Trevor, there's, there's, there's so uh, many repeats. Goomba Fire is next. What? Are you, <laughs> <laughs> I think... I remember Goomba Fire. I think in order to in order to continue this conversation, we can fire Trevor Gumby. Uh, so. Yeah, Trevor, ah, please get okay, out of here. Okay, fine, okay. So everybody knows the last few years have seen some incredible oh, upheavals in the media landscape. Um, I left, uh, this is now a couple of years ago, then DJ Spoo left, Tebow Touch left. No, I got fired. Well, I mean, it's a, you know, this is a Technically, debate. Technically, Touch was also kind of fired. We can talk about this. And then he ran away before it was has <laughs> 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 got jumpies. <laughs> So we can get into the detail in a minute. But, okay. um, you know, the past couple of weeks have seen another shockwave. DJ Fresh's sudden departure from Metro for reasons that are not entirely clear there either. Uh, now joining 947. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Fat Joe on indefinite leave from Radio 2000. Robert Marawa, whose surprise exit from Supersport caught us off guard. And then uh, Trevor Gumby, as we said, who should have been fired when he started his first radio show. But he wasn't because he was on cliffcentral.com um, he tweeted about bringing these guys together for a lineup to beat all lineups and we thought you know what it's time that we all got into a room and I did invite Joe by the way uh, Fat Joe was very much on the on our minds today and I saw a lot of tweets and 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 Instagram posts about him and I did ask uh, Joe to join us first of all he's in Cape Town right um, so he needs to be de decolonized as well but I secondly wanted him to join us on, on Skype, and he said he would try, and uh, he, he did have uh, you know some other reservations about saying so things. So Joe pitched out, basically. He, well, I don't want to be unfair. He, okay. he kind of gave me good reasons. Yeah, Joe, you pitched out. <laughs> Fresh can say that. He's got the right to These are the guys who you either woke up with in the morning or you spent time with in your car, in your head, even keeping company while you're at work. You probably spend more time with um, the, the person on the radio than you do with your own family. In many cases, that's what happens. And it's not surprising that when there's movement, you move from this station to this station, or this happens, or this person gets fired, or this person resigns, it creates upheaval in people's lives too. So it's not often that we get to sit together. We've all maintained, I think, really good relations. I have huge respect for these guys who are in the studio, and for Joe, and for Robert, who's on his way. And I honestly think that it's time we have a conversation honestly, about what's going on in broadcasting. And for the record, for people that have been hounding me about what about the sisters, there's going to be a sisters-only yes. session. Yes, mm. yes, yes. So okay. we're, we're not excluding the sisters, but there will be a <coughs> sisters-only session. So what I'd like to do for starters, because each of you have an incredible story, a lot of these stories are inspiring beyond belief. A lot of them are real rags-to-riches stories too. And maybe people do, maybe people don't know. But I think, uh, you know, to give a, a little background here, I mean, I remember Spoo telling me a story about how he washed Fresh's car for a while to get his attention. Not really wash his car, but I mean, I hung around with you. Remember Begazel? Um Yeah. <laughs> Spoo kind of hung, he used to kind of hang around at Y. Beyond, yeah. I, mean, I mean, he'd do mixes on my show. So, yeah. you know, that's how I met Spoo. But Spoo has always been that guy that knows how to hang around strategically. <laughs> so you see him, but he's not in your face. And I think a lot of kids can learn from that. Absolutely. That when, when you want to get into any industry, don't be in people's faces. Be almost just by the blind spot. So I see you, but I don't see you. You're not a bother, but I know you're there. And that's, you know, that's how you start getting into places. And, and Spoo per persevere, has been right, that guy. Spoo? Yeah, I think for, for me, Fresh has been a, a very good role model for me because I, mo I modeled my career from the beginning around him and a, a gentleman by the name of Kabzela. May mm. so rest in peace. He's no longer mm, around. Absolutely. I could relate with Kabzela because I was from the township, right? And he spoke Vanek. And he spoke to a lot of our, our hearts, especially Joby kids from Mekas, you know? And Fresh was, was just the guy because I, I was a DJ playing on vinyls, cassettes, and I just wanted to be like Fresh. But I think the one thing that set him apart was the, the giving. 
part of, of, of DJ Fresh. He had an education foundation at the time. And Kabzela was doing so something similar with a movement called the PYGs, the Positive Youth of Gauteng. Mm. So when I got in, I didn't just want to be that entertainment guy. Mm. So the mm. purpose in what they were doing sort of rubbed onto me, and I've carried that all the way until today. Well, breakfast radio and, and mornings in general and then, and then afternoons are very sort of similar in one way in that you are in people's car with them. They're not usually in a good mood in traffic. You've got a lot of responsibility to keep them entertained, informed. You kind of are the first port of call to give mm. them context to the world. Mm. And all three of you, and, and certainly Robert too, have, have been part of what's keep, keeping people sane, I think, in all this craziness. Um, where does it where does it come from for you, Touch? I mean, what's the, what's the where does the whole story start, and kind of where are you now in terms of, of broadcasting and media? Can you put my level a bit up? Sure. I'm fighting a bad cold. Thank you. I think for me, you want a tissue? It has to do with <laughs> yeah. I want to throw my gum away. It has to do with the amazing journey of being born in a church family where you consider yourself a broadcaster. Anytime you're in front of a mic, thank you, thank you, Fresh. Any, anytime you're in front of a mic, and 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 you, you know you get used to talking to a group of people every Sunday school, you become accustomed to talking to an audience. But when you get into a situation where um, you hear these people and you imagine them going to school, I remember driving in this taxi to find the Bill Park and I think uh, Fresh was in the afternoon on why? Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, the easy drive. Yeah. The, easy the easy drive. drive. And, yeah, and, and our driver was bragging that he can take us to go see him. And we drove to Bertram's. Um, this house in Bet and, and, yeah. and yeah. It was a Radio and Freedom building. Yeah. yeah. Still there. Yeah. yeah, still there. And that's the first time I think I, I saw Fresh, but you know, uh um why didn't you come say hi? Like, Never did I man. Now, it was it was it was you know when you just shocked because you, you know, Coca see we brag, I can take it to Fresh now. It's like nah, yeah, right. And we drove there. I won't forget that day. Um I, uh, the first time I also met uh Bad Boy T. Uh, he yeah. had long dreads, speaking classes, so he was a bit approachable. Fresh had this polished English that, you know. <laughs> he, 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 like, I'm sure Spook, that's why he related to Kabzera. Because as Kabzera said, hey, was Fresh going to say, hi, sir? Well, you don't know how to say it. You know, like, yo, dog, what are, you don't know how to say it. Yeah. But, you know, and then you, just, you start falling in love with this. So I can talk to thousands of people, and they can imagine. And exactly what I imagined of Fresh, he was that guy. Big voice, big structure, and he had this car uh, with 24 inch a uh, 24 the Wrangler right because uh, yeah, he had many cars this guy it was a Wrangler with a 5 inch race suspension and balloon tires. or was it the Saab yeah. or was it there because you had a lot of cars yeah it must have been the Saab and then this, and, 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 and that's when I realized that actually this is a serious career man and, and coming from the Val and knowing that YFM is 45 minutes away I always knew that one day one will move from broadcasting as a church boy to broadcasting to thousands of people as your boy and well eventually millions and I, I did a little calculation i figured out that between us including robert too yeah we at one point all of us were responsible for reaching something like 14 million people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and 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 radio is an interesting thing we'll talk about that in a moment or two because radio is going through some changes there's a lot happening in the world of radio. There's a lot happening in the in the other forms of audio broadcasting. But I, I do want to, like Fresh, tell us just a little bit about how you started because these two have both admitted that you were a huge role model. And a, yeah, who inspired you, Fresh? Yeah, where did you come from? Geez, where do I start? For me, I think when I was 13 years old, uh, I was in boarding school and there were Zambian kids uh, that were at our boarding school. Uh, this is in Botswana, in, in Gabs. And uh, so the one kid's dad worked at the United Nations. Hmm. So whenever he went to the US, he'd record WBLS. Uh. And he'd bring back these tapes of this radio station. And as fate would have it, I mixed on WBLS about 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And did an interview there. But anyway, that's a story for another day. So I'd listen to this radio that I'd never heard before. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, you had your radio bops. And then when I was 15, Metro FM started broadcasting also. So for me, that's when I started taking an interest in this. And I had a friend, a Norwegian guy, uh, his name is Oscar, uh, like my best friend until we die. He left for Norway when we were 15. Yeah. So the way we used to share music is we'd make each other radio tapes. Huh. So I'd introduce the songs and tell him <laughs> this is the brand of Brenda Fassi and whatever else. But he was your listener. So he was my one listener. 
I started my career with one listener, and he'd do the same. I mean, I remember I was the first kid at our school that had Milli Vanilli, but it also had Oscar's voice on it introducing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, but but it, there's something almost poetic about having your best friend as a listener. Yes. Because it teaches you about that relationship right up front. Huh? In fact, I'll tell you right now, so fast forward a year after matric, brand new radio station, I walked in and said, guys, I, I, I need a job. And I know I can do better than half of the guys on the radio station. And they auditioned me on a Monday. They told me on a Tuesday that you start on Saturday. And I started my radio career with zero training. Jeez. Like zero training. But because I'd listened to so much radio from, uh, what was it? I think it was Capital in, in, in London, yeah. WBLS, KISS FM. I'd listened to so much radio mm. that I'd, I knew exactly what I needed to do. So I think the first five years of my radio career were done with zero training. If you listen to a lot of people on radio now, you'd uh, think this, that's still happening. <laughs> in, in fact, that, I think that's half the problem. Yeah, but anyway, so, right. uh, th so that was 92 when I started my radio career. Then I relocated here after two years of failed law school, like you, Gareth. Just like me. Um, <laughs> end of 94, I moved to Jersey. Um, I studied at Boston Media House. It was a row. Um, Diploma in media studies, yeah. so I'm like a qualified uh, journalist and um, copywriter. Then that's one thing. I B don't believe have. it or Do not, you, are you a qualified journalist? But you've got white privilege. You don't need qualifications. <laughs> I think it also helped. It, it, it also helped that you you went to Boston because they geez, they, they they pushed and marketed that school on Fresh's image. I know. I think it thing. helped that he became a, a success. Do yeah, you course. know that there are kids who want to go to Boston because they think they're going to meet me there? <laughs> Like, <laughs> You've never given a lecture, though. And you, I, I, you I remember you your first show. You were with Penny. No, you know, actually, we got to say this. Penny? If it wasn't for Zach. You remember? The, the, the Zach Takila. Zach Takila, right? Yeah. Yes. I got to give Zach a shout out. Zach and I, so I was doing an insert on Zach's show, and then I came home for a month, right? So one of the Saturdays, the first Saturday, he's taking me to go see the studio, because I was that guy who calls in on the phone from New York. Um but at that time, I started doing one hour live from New, uh, from New York. So we had the stream going from 2003, I think. So one Saturday, I visit home, and Zach is asked to do a competing alcohol uh, promotion. And he says there's a funeral at home in his culture. He can't endorse alcohol during the week of a funeral. Now, Ndate Mashiko at that time is an assistant station manager. He says, BS, what culture is that? Yeah. And they have an altercation in the car. So I'm listening to Zach telling Leo and Dade Majiro, no, you can't force me to do anything against my culture. I'll give you the policy at the SABC, this and this, this. And I could just see it in the air. This guy's gone. Then I get a text. They don't know I'm riding with Zach. I get a text. Say, hey, man, that New York guy is around. He's in town. Yeah. Can you go do Zach's show? <laughs> that New York guy. <laughs> Can you go do Zach's show? But I'm sitting, so I'm sitting on a... No, listen. I'm sitting in the car, and we were doing a campaign for Shrek. Remember the, the yeah. movie Shrek just mm -hmm. came out? So Zach is sitting here. And I'm sitting as a passenger. They're like, Touch, where are you? I said, I'm in a car. And this is Leo says, are you able to be at SABC Studios in the next two hours? It was 4 o'clock Saturday. Mm. I said, sure. And I'm like, what, why? Where's Zach? Zach is not going to do the show. He's fired. Oh, But yep. they didn't tell him he's fired. Oh. Jeez. And I'm riding in a car That's with him. That's how I was fired. That one. So, <laughs> I'm walking in people and they listen to me. I'm like, what's so, going on here? No, but, but I got but, but I to gotta tell you this. So I got to ask the guy who just got fired to go drop me off. So you can at do the his studio show. so I can do his show. <laughs> and we at Meryl's art. So I said, this is a difficult crossroad I've ever been in my life. Wow. So I'm like, yo, Zach, listen, I think they're going to let you go because I just got off the phone to ask to go do your show. It's like, nah, dog, they're not going to let me go. I'm going to go do my show. So I'm like, okay, let's go to work. Great. We go to work. Luckily, Leo is already there. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mashiro used to have this white, the yellow Toyota Corolla, my Lord. He's, it's parked outside. And now Zach sees him. I'm like, what are you going to do? He's like, no, nah, I'm going to tell him. He gets in the studio. Dr. Mashiro says, touch, come inside. Zach, stay out. Hmm. Now I don't know how to control a desk. Flip. There's a guy called Andrew Bapella. Yeah. Andrew Bapella says, that's a mic. That's a guest mic. That's music. So I got to act like I know how to do this. And it's that, that old... You're the guy from New York. You better know yeah. how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> because this is some old age... You remember that old desk? It I was remember, an old, massive the, desk. I think it was an analog and, desk, right? Yes. Proper, proper... In fact, the only good thing about those old desks yeah. were the microphones. That's it. Nah, those great. microphones were... Yeah. Jeez, but anyway, yeah, sorry. No, but you could smell even apartheid on those yeah. microphones. <laughs> 
when that's, no, sponge, that old. When that's sponge would fall, I'll only hold it like a t-shirt. Yeah. It was, no, there was zero, zero hygiene, but let me, let's be honest, though. That, that was the mm. best training academy. So the show went live, 6 p.m. We went live at that time, and all mics were on. Yeah. To be safe, because I could see there's four mics for guests. <laughs> I switched on all yeah. mics, and they're all listening. Leo's listening to his first, to the first link like this. It's like uh. you did a good job. You did a good job. Just tone down on 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 the screaming. You yes. you, you, you scream too much. And then um, may his soul rest in peace from YFM, former comes in. Uh, no, former music compiler um, from Takani. Oh, DJ uh, Monde. DJ, DJ Monde. Yes. DJ Monde sent me a text. Nice one, boy. Nice one. So I'm like, all right, cool. And Zach, you know. Shame did, he's sitting out there without a job. Yeah, Zach called me. <laughs> but Zach that's called me and says, yo, let's quit, let's quit this thing. I'm like, quit? quit I'm, just, get it, I'm quit? just getting started. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do that, man. And um, he had his fight with SABC, and that's how I landed the show. Um, in fact, continue. may I tell you why I listened to your show, Rhyme and Reason? is because... Because you did not have a radio background, you broke rules, radio rules, <laughs> but it was okay. Yeah. Even yeah. With, I mean, even with your with your drive show. Yeah. I mean, your drive show was not traditional radio. No. Mm. It broke a lot of radio rules, but it also made it endeared you to a lot of people because mm. you were that guy. And, and that's what I've appreciated about your radio. His wow. knowledge of hip hop as well. Exactly. That's how at least. That's what I. That's what I'd listen to Rhyme and Reason for. Yes. For the new music. Yeah. And just the artists used to have on the I show. You used to it was a big show. It was tough just, to be a you fresh. You indicated something or, that I'm interested in, um, because radio is this cutthroat business, right? Yeah. And we all know that changes happen. Yeah. Um, sometimes the management make these changes. Sometimes the audience demand the changes, and sometimes someone else moves, and you have to move. Were, were they not? Right. It's a thankless business, actually. Yeah. yeah. And, and I saw a tweet this week from another DJ who was complaining about, you know, this changes lives and people's lives are ruined when these things happen because not everybody floats to the top and not Absolutely. everybody gets to choose yeah. what goes on here. And I mean, I'm, I'm looking at three guys here and Robert's another one that you got to choose most of the time. And, and, and uh, that, that, can, that can have its price as well, right? But, but to be honest, guys, we need to reflect on what happened. I think looking at the state capture now, it's actually giving memories of where things went wrong. So we can understand as far as when we went through some temporary sessions, oh, this decision was made. Hence, there was a reshuffle next week. Hence, there was this. I think we also got to go back because... SABC, decisions are made and nobody's held accountable. Mm. The DJ is the culprit. And it's an SOE. And if you look at all <laughs> what's happening but in all the other SOEs right now, it's, it's, it's politically yeah. influenced. You it know? doesn't actually, it's not really business yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I, think, I think SABC aside, and I don't know if it's, uh, you know, in inverted commas, a black radio thing, yeah. where every March there's this madness that we must reshuffle, we must hire new people, we must fire people. But more often than not, people are being fired not based on that we, we gave you deliverables, we gave you all the tools you needed, you didn't deliver, therefore bye-bye. No. It's almost like people wake up on a whim, they decide, I don't like Gareth today, he must go. Mm. My friend doesn't like Zbu anymore, mm. uh, Zbu must go. Uh, whereas if you say to me, I gave you everything you needed to reach your targets, uh, we paid you well, Yeah year on year you have not delivered or we've watched tracked your progress for three years and we can see it's not making business sense we're going to have to let you go then it makes sense because yeah, it's a business you decision you never get that explanation we've you all, never we've all heard stories of guys who go in and they they're, they're suddenly their card doesn't work or their their tag doesn't work and the suddenly the studio is locked and they try to get in they're like there must be something wrong but they've been fired and no one even told them yeah me, right? me for, before i joined metro for me to understand that those decisions can get made, I remember Bertha Charuma. Yes. She used to do the 9 to 12. I remember And she Bertha. had the highest listenership. Oh, yeah. But she was still fired. Mm -hmm. And then I was like... like so, how does this work? But at the time, I was still at Y. But I think... Because you remember, the mentality was, you've got high numbers, you're bringing in a lot of money. Right. You know, there's a lot of ads on your show. Obviously, you're not going to get fired. Yeah. But it happened to Bertha. And then from there, I sort of... When I got into Metro myself, I, I was actually recruited by... Mr. Leslie Togo. Mm. At the time, yeah. yeah, he was in charge of commercial radio, right? Commercial uh, yes. radio. And, and by the way, I just want to clear the air here because I'm, I'm sure that someone 
at the SABC is is nervous about that. This is not an SABC bashing session either. I mean, we've all had good times there. Um, yeah, we've we've all yeah. had great experiences, yeah. many as, as bad. I never had anything near the interference that people think I had in any of the programming that we did. In fact, I think for the longest time, I don't know if they thought not many people listened to us, but often nobody interfered at five. Yeah, they did, They were more interested in what was going on in Metro Yes, in terms of politics because, of course, Metro had this huge audience yeah. and the audience were, they mattered to the politicians. Ooh. In fact, we got away with murder yeah. most of the time, this myself stuff, and this you. Stuff you, and I you guys could, had a lot of this fun. This stuff you and I could, could never do in radio now yeah. that we were getting away with then. But funny, you, you talk about us being there. I remember having a meeting with Fresh when he was at Y, I was at 702, and we met up knowing that, that Five had been courting both of us. And we decided that we jointly decided yeah. we were going to go there because we saw an audience of, first of all, young people who were, uh, this is the future, right? This is where we wanted to craft something new. Mm. And it was fertile ground for us to play and to grow audiences and to do something different. And I remember making that decision and Fresh and I were laughing about it. And then, you know, when it all started happening, we we weren't even sure that it was real yeah. half the time. And and we were allowed to do stuff. Yeah, we got away with a lot. I mean, I, I listened to some of the parodies we did, some oh. of the political commentary, mm. some of the stuff we did. I'm like, how did these politicians not even hear any of this? And the, or the, allow us to get away with it's it? It's so funny. I found out the other day that Cyril Ramaphosa's kids grew up listening to us yeah. on, on Five. Yeah, and, yeah. and here he is. He's now the president. Probably just as well he wasn't the president then, or we might have been fired. But this is how it works, right? And someone on the board changes. Mm. Someone on the board that you don't even know. I mean, we never even met the board. Jeez, yeah. the fun we had at Y. Yeah, yes. Because a, a lot of the stuff that you guys were doing on, on Five, it's stuff that had happened on Y. And on Y, the biggest culprits were him and Joe, right? Mm -hmm. And Joe would, would take on that attitude and also do the same on his television show. So if you look at a, a lot of people he pissed off, it was crazy at the time, but the freedom that we had on radio, I think for me, that's what sort of rubbed onto me. And mm. I, I sort of became a rebel on radio. And every time when I'd be on air, I'd always have to get reprimanded because I'd get my BCCSA yeah. letters and emails and, and listeners complaining from time to time. But it's because of the culture that I'd adopted from YFM. And in a way, I didn't want to be toned down when I got to Metro. I knew that I needed to mature but I still wanted to be me. And I guess that sort of was you know, the friction. Y, YFM was a really special like laboratory for all of this stuff. There, there was some fantastic stuff that was done there that couldn't have been done anywhere else. It was experimental. And the guys who had that vision, that was, it was extraordinary for the time. At the time, I think a lot of people wanted YFM to go national. And I always say, and I've been saying this for the past, what, like five to ten years? I'm like, why is national? Mm -hmm. It's actually international. You're right. Because mm -hmm. everybody who was there is everywhere. Well, well, isn't it cool that these days, you, you, even, even traditional radio, you can hear online anywhere in the world. Right. And it kind of binds people together. It's almost like a country all on its own. And, and this is what's cool. I wanted to ask all of you this with Robert here, but we may as well go ahead. Mm. So do you, do you feel, because Fresh, I remember you saying to me once that you will move you're not loyal to a station in sure. terms of uh, the institution, the mm. company. You're loyal to your listeners. And you will take your listeners with you wherever you go, right? In, in, in fact, I think the one thing I've probably appreciated the most about the past four, eight weeks of madness is realizing how many loyals I have. Mm. Uh, you know, people that started listening to me at Y that went to five with me mm -hmm. that are saying, if you go to Classic FM, we're there yeah. because we are loyal to your brand of radio, not to any radio station. I mean, I did an interview with the Sowetan uh, today and they're asking me about, you know, Metro versus going to 947, um, you know, nationwide versus a, a Joburg station. And I was telling them, in fact, I could broadcast from a cave. Yeah. My people will find me. That's right. It doesn't matter where in the world they are. So I don't even do radio for whatever the market is because I know that my people know where to find me. And, they'll, and by hook or crook, they'll fucking do it. But mm. isn't it the strength that you were able to build this platform, right? Cl well, uh, I was before we even get to that, the other thing that's happened is social media, right? And yeah. now you have a direct channel to your audience, which right. before was controlled by management. <laughs> Yes. I mean, you, you didn't have a say. Like you were saying, Spoo, about Bertha. She got fired. There was nothing she could do about it in those days. Mm. We are 
all emancipated in a way because we haven't been able, well, we, we've been able, they weren't able in those days to, to do stuff without management say so. Mm. And I remember mm. I had that early case with the SABC where there was a tweet that I put out and they tried to tell me I couldn't do it. Yeah. And I said to them, what I do on the air is yours. Sure. Everything outside of that is mine, which was, uh, I, I don't know if that would hold up now. Because they kind of tell people what to do a lot of the time now. I think now they've worked social media behavior into contracts. Right. And I think not just at the SABC. I think just Everywhere. generally throughout yeah. corporate South Africa. Well, you um, could be an accountant. But you've just signed yeah. the contract, so you know um, I knew it. <laughs> I haven't signed yet. Oh, not yet. Oh. But about advertising. <laughs> That's some news. <laughs> As no, breaking, news. breaking news on Cliff Central, ladies and gentlemen. We about to pull down the billboards tomorrow. Fresh is about to take a brand new big offer. In fact, Mr. Ravi Knight, you double up the numbers. In fact, we were, you know, with my lawyer, we were going through, you know, my past 13 years of radio contracts. They actually give us zero rights. Mm -hmm. The rights rest more with the broadcaster yeah, yeah, than they do with you. What? Everything is about if you do this, if you don't do that. Mm. But there's nothing about if we don't help <laughs> you, you sooner. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And, and, and I think we need to actually relook at why we are signing these flipping contracts mm. in the first place. Yeah, and the because contracts, they don't make listen, labor sense. I wanted to ask you this. Yeah, There are a lot of uh, people talking about the reasons that you were fired, and a lot of people think it's this word. I think that's ridiculous. I think sometimes management need to find an excuse mm. yeah. because they've made a decision. Yeah, And, I mean, you don't have to yes or no on this if it's still something that you are dealing with. Yeah, I but, don't like talking about my exes, but we can we can talk about <laughs> we can but, talk about this one. Let's go. Of, okay, so theory number one, yes, is that you were too expensive, and the SABC needs to save money. I don't think so. I, I mean, don't think I, I don't I don't think so. I can tell you why Fresh got fired because I still get my Intel works twenty four okay, seven at uh, SABC. Tell us about your mall. Who's your mall? Who's your mall? No, every, everybody, everybody. Who's works, your everybody works, yes. everybody <laughs> works. Everybody works. Who's your Tesla's so dad? Do you want to so you, you dispute this? I, I'm, I, I know. I, I've been. How can you dispute? I wrote the book of how to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fat Joe did. And Chili M did. No, no, Fat Joe did. Let's give credit where credit's due. Fat Joe wrote that book. But people don't know this. People don't. I'm, and I'm back at Fresh's point. I, I, I was um, asked if I want to leave by the CEO. And he gave me the reasons why. And then Mr. Leslie Nkloko said, no, those, you know, touch, it's an option if you want to stay. It was around February. So I said, hold on, what do you guys mean? You don't want to get rid of me if I, if I want to go. I was like, you tell me if I want to leave or not. I said, ain't hey, fit. Ish, mm. these, these are the type of excuse they'll make you leave. Not that you're not performing, not that you, you're not delivering. You, you, you're, you're, not ball. You're, yeah, not you're not playing ball. You're not playing ball. You're not playing ball. You know? Mm. Mm. So there are certain things that when I look at new talent that is excited about this new job and you're like, man, I wish I could tell them the real deal is if you're average, you're going to remain there for long. Yeah. You're going to be loved. If you're not average, you'll last a short yeah. time. Yeah. Once you stand out, you're already going to be secluded. You start, you're going to start going to meetings that you don't understand. Konji, why I'm sitting here? And all you want to do is deliver a flipping shit hot show. That's, That's all. That's all I want to do. All the other stuff do. you don't care about. Keep me out of the politics. Yeah. I don't want to be in the politics. No. I don't care which politician is breathing down your neck. Give me the space, the latitude to do In fact, that is I the only here. job management have to do is keep you away from those. Protect me from the right. noise. So but if, if management become the noise, who else is going to protect you? So they were, they were looking for an excuse, in other words, like they have with you. What happened to Master Chabanzov? Yeah. She I think let's, keep it, let's keep it moving from the SABC. Yeah, I agree. Let's get the conversation right, but, moving. But, I mean, do you want to, you want to clear it up? I don't think there's anything to clear. I just think it's unfortunate that it became the storm that it did. Because this could have been nipped in the bud week one. Were you difficult? In fact, I don't think I was difficult at all. I think I think I was willing to play ball. But when people want to handle something their way, mm. or it was almost a fit in or fuck off situation. Right. And for mm. me, by you know, as a matter of principle, I don't work like that. I believe there's always a middle ground. But if you're not willing for us to find each other, I'd rather leave. I wish we had more people with the security to know that they'd get another job, mm. you'd actually have more people walking away from jobs. Just a lot of people sing for that dinner yeah. and they can't afford to rock the boat because what if I don't get another uh, means of income? 
So there's a lot of people who literally stay in shitty contracts yeah. because I don't want my kids to starve. I don't want to starve. For me, it was a matter of principle. I, you know, I even said to the family that, listen, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold down the fort. Chances are they're going to fire me, but that's what's going to happen. What happens, happens. We'll see what happens later. Oh, yeah, Robert is in the building. Robert Marawa what's has up, Rob? arrived. Okay, How are you, so, my man? You've, yeah. got, you've got that uh, pyramid smell. Just <laughs> he's, just come from, he's just come from Egypt. So, so I told you guys Mahmoud I, is in I the messaged, house. Uh, I messaged uh, Robert last week. He was in Egypt still with, uh, with, uh, with this, the football. He came back over here and he said, uh, if, I, if I can be there, I'm in. If I'm in the country, I'm in. And you've sure. just finished a show. Yeah. Thank you for coming through. We t we, we, you can catch up because everybody's just sharing their dramas of like uh, radio ups and downs. But uh, Fresh was telling media us. ups and downs. No, I've been media. listening. I've been media. listening. Yeah. I've been listening. But these are all former Metro FM DJs. <laughs> I'm still a current Metro FM. That's right. And Radio 2000 DJ. He's hung on to it. You know, no, I've <laughs> come back. I've been, I've been back. fired. I've been fired. I've come back. So this is a second. This is a resurrection. What do you know that we don't? <laughs> <laughs> There's still room for you at the end. You know? <laughs> Anything is possible. It's, it's as simple as that. And, and you know, the, the guys have been perfectly honest about their, their journeys and their stories. And it's, and it's true. All you want to do is do a damn rocking show. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you are, what you do. The only love of what we do is based on our preparation is based on the dedication, the passion, and that's all that radio is. Radio is not something you do by accident. Radio is not something that you do because you look smart or you have a certain following on Instagram and no. you know you you portray differently because you strategically place your Louis Vuitton bag with super seeds. How you so you know, <laughs> let, let's not You're right. No, but I'm being serious. Yeah, yeah. some of this the, stuff is so the noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yes. yeah. Radio is, is what I grew up in. You know, listening to Radio Zulu, listening to Kansas City, listening to Josh Omlaba back in those days. I was like, wow, this invisible voice, where does it come from? And there grew the love for radio for me. And as much as I wanted to do television, radio was always that thing that was hovering around. So when Romeo called up and said, dude, you want to do this? I was like, I don't have the experience. I think Touch was overwhelmed by the huge desk. I was like, what am I going to do? Andrew Botobella was like, hey, I'm just here to take calls. You just talk. <laughs> you know, so, you know. But it, it's become something that has become a huge part of my life. And it, it is serious that the people that are here, all this talent that is here, is completely disrespected. You think for what so? they you do. Think so? They disrespected, not by the people that listen to them, yeah, but the people that pay them, so called, or don't pay them, control them. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you love, Fresh, most about radio? I mean, Robert speaking, almost it's almost like poetry the way you talk about it. It's real. Mm, we mm. all love this, right? We love this. You wouldn't do it if you didn't love it. But what do you love about it? The one thing that has me loving this platform is how we're able to affect change. And for me, if it's not going to change someone's life, I'm not touching it. Mm. I mean, I always allow, I always make sure that what I feel is my purpose on this planet to lead decisions I make, even in media. Um, so for me, that's what I love about this medium. It ch changes people's lives, literally. Uh, you know, you have people say to you, I was listening to you with my dad in the car when I was in primary school. In high school, you took me home. Um, in, in, you know, when I was at university, um, I listened to you when I was doing my assignments. And now I'm getting married. Thanks for raising me. Those are the stories no other medium will hear. Yeah. That's why I love radio. Because we change people's similar lives. Reason. Similar reason. As I told you that um, I modeled my career around purpose. And I think it's something that has stuck with me in every decision that I make, even in business right now. It has to be in inspired by purpose. And radio was able to give me that immediate contact with the people that I either wanted to help. Mm. And at some point, I didn't even, even have a structure or a foundation or money in my pocket, but I'd see myself educating a couple of kids. Why? Because I I'd use the medium to put whoever on, on the line and put whoever on the line and put them on the spot and get them to commit to help this kid where those kids are now graduates, et cetera. So for me, it's just been that medium that, that is always able to speak to people right mm. now. But although back then it was a theater of the mind, I think we wanted the lucky few 
who crossed over before pre-internet pre pre pre-internet exactly mm. yes. where you can just imagine how a radio studio is it's like. i think it's way harder to be on radio now but touch what do you love uh, you know what fresh said really hit home um the first time I got suspended, I'm sorry to sound like an angry ex. Um, the first time I got suspended, I, I, I had this guy who used to clean outside the SABC. And he said, yo, man, I just want to link to my to a favorite song. Like, he didn't say the word link. He didn't know what it meant. But he says, I, I want, can I, can I just dedicate a song? I said, no. Come in the studio and link to that song. And the guy started crying. Yeah. He started crying. I told him to, he came in and he linked to the song and... Uh, Months later, he gave me a call that he's moved to Mpumalanga and he works for a station called, what is it? Mso, um, not Mshoba. What's the station in Mpumalanga? Empower? No. Um, Kualakwan. It's, it's Kualakwan. Oh, okay. and, uh, and he said, the day I gave him that chance to link into a song and that ambience in the radio station, uh, he took that picture and showed them his, and, he, and he lied to his bosses that he was my intern. But the guy was a cleaner. But he got so well cause, and I learned that all of us if we are given a chance, given an opportunity, if we are hungry enough, we are going to outshine anyone who's currently you know, holding that position. Mm. Some of us, all we need is an opportunity. The guy moved on from being given a chance to create a link. So the ability to change people's life. SABC has been really dirty since, so thanks for that. No, 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 no. You took out uh, one good cleaner. No, the one, the guy, the one guy. No, but, 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 but I, I'll give it, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it, I'll give it Robert to Robert Morrow had to wade through trash. To get it. <laughs> no. Come on, guys. We, we said we're not going to be going that route with no. SABC. It all, then you know, we, we hear. trash them. <laughs> it's terrible. I take it back. SABC terrible. played a big role in my life. So I'll always say it gave me that opportunity to change those lives. This mm. He's not the only one. You know, we've done crazy yeah. stuff. I host, I had a wedding live on air. Two people came, we had a pastor, they did their vows. But the best moment was always when I have to do a transition from my show to Robert. Mm. You know, we, like Fred said earlier, we were on radio. It will be a dialogue. Unrestricted, right? Yeah. You, we'll have a dialogue and this, he's about to go to sports and we're having a chat and you got this guy, Rob Beasy, in between. He's trying to go to traffic because this client paid and now we're having a conversation about the game that's going to be playing later and Rob is having a conversation about the song that I played. So we have a spot to hear pop person bouncing between hip-hop and music and sports and all of that when you listen to it it sounds like it's scripted it's magic mm. it's magic mm. and, and, and that's, that's the best radio but it was right? electrified yeah. 100 percent yeah. and, and and that's the thing i mean people don't even know i heard you guys calling him the new york guy and that's exactly what he was yes. I, I met touch for the very first time in new york yeah. In the streets of New York, because this is how this man was hustling. Yeah. Yeah. This man was hustling. Who's the famous uh, yeah. <laughs> chap that you're with? I'll remember his name just now. Name 10. Probably yeah, yeah, one yeah. of 10. <laughs> <laughs> but then he was he was the man. Yeah. And and we met him. We'd gone to NBA yeah. with Liz Lindlog yeah. then and yeah. etc. Yeah, 97. Yeah, then he approached us. He was like, hey, Rob, you know, American accent, you know, touch, you know, does mess around. Yeah. So he was there. He approached us and he was like, no, Leslie, I can make things happen for you. What do you mean? I can get you for your for your Sunday show, which the late eighties Zondi was doing. I, I can get you Keith Sweat. I yeah. can get you Mary J. Blige to yeah. interview. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're looking at each other and saying, "Who the hell is this guy?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you know, hey, what papa no mundo, You know, which is what we're saying yeah. colloquially. Is like, yeah, what is he saying? But in the end, the interviews with Keith Sweat happened. That yeah. happened, yeah. yes. The interviews with Mary J. Blige happened yeah. sure. on Metro FM. Sure. Why? Because he yeah, was his kid bright eyed but he wanted to have this radio career and reverse that process back to the country sure. yeah. and then he got the prime time slot sure. and as he was succeeding boom nipped in the bud as Boo was succeeding whether or not he was taking chances promoting his brand or not in an awards it's just Mofire. Mofire. you can say more fire right yeah. mention more yeah. fire yeah. in fact why don't we have more fire here what's yeah. going on no we've Where's got sponsors okay. to wash down no, to wash down to wash down the jacket but to Robert's point yeah, yeah. But, but, I thought but you were going to bring cans of it seriously I, I, no I didn't want to I, left not I knew you had sponsors yeah. not today <laughs> I'm a businessman it's okay yeah thank you to Vintuk by the way Vintuk's happening here yeah so all I'm saying is that touch prime of his afternoon drive zapped yeah smooth prime of his career at metro zapped fresh same story i was zapped the same way bonang was mm -hmm. and you ask yourself the question why 
Mm. It's like sabotage. You know, why Why is it? Who? Who is the broadcast to? Are, are we just basically saying, oh, okay, there'll be noise. Fresh will trend for the week. But, you know, the dust is going to settle. It's going to mm. be another day. Mm. But then it is also our responsibility as as the public because... I love the SABC. We all love the SABC because mm. it, it gave rise to the all individuals that are here. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Is that we don't want it to be every time running to government for bailouts because th th that opportunity presents itself. In so fact, that should never be happening. I mean, the money Metro and SABC One make alone mm. could carry the building. Or cause the alone. 100%. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. So why are, you, why are you getting rid of the guy that is bringing in the money? Why mm -hmm. are you getting rid of all these guys that are here who are bringing in the money? Mm. Because you're not being answerable to people, like let's say uh, people are buying into a pay-per-view or pay-per-listen type right. of environment. You're saying, okay, we can afford to get rid of them because we can. Why? Because we can quickly run to government so we can get a bailout. And I'm saying that that mindset has got to change so that we don't, we, as the SABC public broadcaster, has enough talent to generate the money to keep it fluid. Sure. When Peter McLaren no. was there, he was able it's to great, do it. Great no, boss no. there. Yeah. Yeah. He was able to do it. So why don't you go back to that footprint and say it worked then? Why can't it work now? Yeah. Well, this is, this is where we can go into radio now and how it's changed. Um, and, and by radio, I mean broadcasting in general because we could talk TV as well. There's a lot that's happened in all of our careers that has, that has happened while we're on the, you know, it's like dancing in a moving carpet yeah. because the thing is changing under your feet mm. the whole time. Uh, in, in radio terms, the, the, the advent of social media has been a massive change. Uh, the, the, the disruption of that relationship that management used to control, which we've covered already in terms of the audience, now they can reach you directly. Mm -hmm. And you can do things like Spoo's done, like Touch has done, like I've done, where you can disintermediate those other people who aren't actually part of the relationship mm. anyway. Yeah. But what other, what other changes are you happy about and unhappy about? I, no. think, I'm, I think I'm unhappy about, so, sorry, Touch. Go ahead. Um, I understand that times do change, and I, and I respect that. And I respect new talent, and I respect new ways of hustling and doing things. I don't expect the current generation to work as hard as we did. Mm. They've got technology on their side. They can hustle smarter, right? Sure. Mm. But I also come from the school of listening to Radio Bob, listening to Kaya Cool, listening to listening to radio from that, listening to the links, not having a bus drive through a link and a song. Just those little <laughs> dynamics, right? Yes. And one of the radio things, one oh one. Thank you. That's all. One of the things I don't like right now is. Um, the people who are just hired because they've got a, a good social media presence. Mm. And, and, and I don't mean that they, they will not adapt and do well on air. Mm. But I, I see it even on television, even in acting, that um, we're not getting a lot of good quality talent mm -hmm. on the radio. When you have actresses say to you, I didn't get a gig because someone with more Instagram followers um, got the gig, that's sad. It's and it's clear that she's a bigger talent. She's a better actress. But simply because either she's not active on social media or she doesn't have a million followers, she doesn't get the gig. That's what, in fact, entertainment has become. You know, Fresh, to your support. Um, so I'm working on this program. Um, I think it's in March next year. I'm bringing Regina King. She's one of the most talented actresses in Hollywood. And... She did this cartoon, Boondocks, if you've seen mm. Boondocks. Yes, yes. She yeah. plays the role of both, um, what's his name, Molly? Riley. Riley, yes. Yeah. And one of the conversations we had, because at that time when we spoke, uh, it was earlier this year, she had under a million followers, right? Mm -hmm. And she mentioned about um, one of the movies that she was working on, that this actress, who's younger, newer in Hollywood, got twice the money than she did because it was going to boost ticket sales. Mm. Um, for her to promote that movie. And I said, that's happening here too? She's like, yeah, that's killing the industry. And when I looked at her following at that time, she was way under a million. And obviously she won an Oscar and she just crossed the million following on Instagram. But that is, for me, the biggest distortion in the space of arts because your ability to sell tickets via your social capital um, equates to how talented you are but to I, put together I, a... Don't you think it's also, it's not exactly 
commensurate. Like, mm. you could have millions of followers. It doesn't mean they're going to go and well, we need to buy investigate. whatever rubbish you put well, up Well, we need there, to investigate right? how did Garrett get relation- that following. But it's a relationship, right? Mm. It's, if, if, I got if it's a not follow- real, I mean, if you just got the numbers, yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean... But how did you the get business. the numbers? If you got the numbers because of your talent, yeah. I respect you. Yeah, sure. But if you got your numbers because of th- different things that has nothing to do with your talent, then we cannot put value in your talent because if you were just to display your talent alone probably we wouldn't follow you yeah, yeah most people mm-hmm. who get a following we know whatever reasons they get it but I feel hey it's the deep quotes that go with those other pictures what do you mean yeah, yeah. Oh. the tricking yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the deep quotes it's the, it's the deep the hashtag quotes. only God can stop me yeah <laughs> hashtag look at God I'm blessed but but we also responsible we are also responsible for something gentlemen we are also responsible where we are caught between what we used to be and what we experienced in the past and we are we also have to pioneer what's tomorrow because if we don't take that responsibility to help policy makers i'm doing something amazing with government i'm 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 starting to realize i'm done blaming people for not making the right decision i'm going to play in the space get close as i can mm. to advise because the young guys who are coming after touch I cannot give them a testimony of how good I was at SABC. No, sure. I need to tell them this is what I did out of frustration. Legacy. And this it it it, it became t- you know painful, excruciating, but we had to pave the way. And sure. we must be at peace with the fact that we are not going to be there to reap. But guys, we have to sow. But how do we bring sanity though, Touch, in terms of what you guys were describing before I got here as far as black radio is concerned? Because then there lies the problem is that if if, if, if black radio is full of the hatred that is seen to be there, mm. um, you know, Fresh would not be getting a gig a, a couple of weeks after he was chucked out. Uh, I mean, I sent him a message saying, you, you know, you're getting, somebody's getting rid of you because of a word that doesn't exist. Yeah. Because, mm. it, 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 think <laughs> Actually, about it, the word doesn't exist. The, it's it, it's a derivative it's of implied, a word. It's implied, but it a doesn't exist. Of, it doesn't no, no, exist. It was well, not the word does, that Fresh got I know. I got to tell you, here's the power of the, of the man. is it, it is now a word. People are using it everywhere. No, it's got T-shirts. It's welcoming Absolutely. him to Namibia. So right. the, the, the bottom line, <laughs> the bottom line of all Everybody of this. Everybody in the audience, say Msuneri really loud. Msuneri! <laughs> 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 Put them so up. it exists now. Yeah. yeah. You want to put that on the microphone? Try, try that again. Go. One, two, three. Sunari! Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. How did you say Sunari or Sunair? Don't twang the re. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> don't twang it because then it takes the. You see. And the, the Zuma will the, be doing his thing. Zimmermas fall. Zimmermas. So you know what? A repeat of all of that. But but that's what I'm trying to say, guys. Is that when you talk about legacy again, Touch is is how how then do we wipe clean that slate that says it can't just be based on people who believe they have power and can sit around at a pub and say, oh. Yeah, I got rid of Fresh. Yeah, no, I got rid I, of School. I, hey, I got I rid think of it's, Touch. It's starting to happen. There are two forces that are beyond the control of anyone who thinks they're powerful. And the first one is is the market. Yeah. Right? The free market decides. Like yeah. 947 aren't getting Fresh on board because they like the color of his shirt today or they know he's going to bring the results. So the, the market quality talks. Of radio. Right? And down. all of us, even if that particular management person or that politician or whatever it might be that interferes, You've got value because you bring the audience, etc. But mm. the other thing is technology, and those two things no one can stop. Mm-mm. I'm no. excited that there are still traditional media platforms that are not under the SOE, um, mm. you know, management, so that it gives people options to experience different types By the of way, leadership. Even private companies are their own little SOEs in some ways, and these private companies, a lot of them have, you know, different approaches. They have different reasons for different assets uh, they have their own all, politics it's not all clear yeah they mm-hmm. have pol- i think there are politics everywhere mm-hmm. what is important and where i wanted to go is we have to have a broader spectrum the same has to happen even with networks we can't be confided to three big cell phone networks we yeah, can't just be confided to two three well, big you and i went to you and i went to parliament, to parliament about it for, yes. for, for data must fall 100 percent. And, and people are still talking about 100 percent. And, and 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 if you only have few institutions with millions of talented people yeah. some of us are too big to be conformed 
to a certain way of doing things. So the more options out there, I think we're going to see a growth in the arts. Uh, we cannot always benchmark uh, national radio with the likes of Radio 2000, Metro, or RSG. Hmm. We gotta have private owned national radio stations on traditional or you know bigger options online. And that's the power of what online and digital has created to say, all right, you going to chuck me out? I'm going to show you that, you know what? The personality in me is not made by the platform. Some of us made the platform. And audiences like options. Mm. I mean, that's what's... True. Nobody... In, in, in fact, I think to a certain extent, there's almost a protectionism still. I mean, when you look at, for instance, a station like Radio Bop, mm. I can almost tell you confidently that Radio Bop was not allowed to survive post-1994 because there was going to be a problem for Metro. Radio Bop was a beast. Was yes, and, I remember and, Bob Mabena on that chat. I used to listen to it. I don't I know how many white people I'd used listen to listen to Glenn to Lewis on Breakfast yeah. and Bob on the Afternoon Drive That's Show. Right. Radio Bob was a beast, mm. but there's almost a protectionism that we can't let the broadcaster be cannibalized. But why not? Why can't you give people options? Because if you're giving great quality broadcasts, you're not going to lose your listeners. But if you're feffing around, you are. Let people have licenses to broadcast. Why can't there be another 10 radio stations that are nationwide? But it is mm. part of the reason that radio audiences are in decline everywhere. Yes. I mean, this is a reality. But people have options now. Yeah. And, and just like watching TV is in decline. I mean, But people... you're killing radio, though, Gareth. You, what, what is traditionally supposed to be radio? Why... why why are there people that nobody talks about, hmm? but they've been on radio for the longest time? Mm. So why aren't you making <laughs> no? But why aren't you making an impact? Because if they're not talking about you, and I don't un understand the whole obsession about BCCSA that okay, you're going to get cited for BCCSA, therefore you fall into trouble as a result of that. On the flip side, Jeremy Mansfield, I used to get told almost every time. Per month, twenty-two sightings at BCCSA, I, I think, and they I loved think I, it. I might have the record still. Yeah, I know you might have had the record. <laughs> no, no, you probably you, do have the yeah, record. Yeah, but people love that because you are making an impact. So why be on air if you're going to be just average. to? Yeah, just you're to just breathe hold fresh the place. air. But like Fresh said, a lot of people need to feed their kids. No, no, and but they, it's not about that. But uh, yeah, some how, people. What, what invested interest, though, Garrett? Do we have in terms of making radio? the radio that we knew. Why are we talking about Bob Radio and Metro then when there was just one DJ? It was one DJ, one microphone, and they were making magic. Mm. It wasn't a whole team mm. of people. Now you have a whole team there. and you're still making mediocre radio. Yeah. Exactly. So, But you're paying each and every one of those individuals, That's plus so production, plus so deputy true. president, production, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but yeah. you're still making mediocre radio in, in fact i was giving a radio talk the other day and i was talking about the fact that you know when i started on radio in 1992 there was no internet so you were forced to be creative you're you were forced to make everything out of nothing mm. but on top Yourself. of that mm. when 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 i started at yfm i was doing the afternoon drive show i produced everything i researched mm. everything i ran the desk i did the mixes the drop-ins i would sit with the engineer yes. and told him what i wanted and presented the mm. easy drive was a one-man show, mm. and right. it worked. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's how we learned radio. Oh. Mm. But, but I guess even with where the times are right now, I don't think us as broadcasters, we should look at it as radio, because the audiences don't anymore. As you're saying, the, the audiences are declining on both, all, all of the mediums. Mm. And, but for me, I said something uh, when, when you were training and everyone was talking, I was like, I love what's going on right now. Mm. Because what's going on right now is giving everybody an opportunity. I mean, I was looking at what um, Cecil has just done with um, Togo Zane with Newsroom Africa. Yes, right. That's yes, a great yes, yes. opportunity Absolutely. there for another media player that is unbiased, right? That's neutral. And that's exactly what is happening on radio right now. But what we are building Massive Metro to be, like our platform, is a content creation hub. Mm -hmm. Like what you've done with... Content is king. Content is king, yes. right? Absolutely. Because it's not only just the ear anymore. It's a it's a it's an entire spectrum as you did three sixty the podcast you know the visual aspect of it I mean look at your state of the art cameras mm. uh, when he speaks they turn around I mean that's that's amazing and packaged into me being your audience I can listen to it I can have appointment listening or I can download it later mm. well, and when, that's where the industry is moving to when I had the idea to do this along with Rena it was we weren't sure about the timing. 
because you never are, right? Mm. You don't know what the timing is. Mm. I mean, and I think fre- you bled fresh, for quite some time, eh? Y- well, look, we d- it wasn't easy, mm. but then it never is if you're doing something worthwhile, mm. right? Because mm. you've got to change habits, and this yes. is what radio also taught all of us to do. Because you change people's habits, mm. like Fresh's people are now going to be listening to him in the afternoon. And that's going to change their whole routine. Millions of people are going to find themselves doing a different thing now. And that's one thing I always say to radio kids. Don't take it for granted how loyal your loyals are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a guy the other day say to me that he would take a bullet for me. He's upset. And, And those are little things we take for granted. That we have loyal people out there that would literally take a bullet for us. That, that you know they will. Well, I mean, when, when I started here, that they said no one's going to follow you because why would they pay for something they could get for free? Yeah, they used to get for free. Right, and, and, and now they got a Imagine it. people saying that about subscription television, especially sports television. Yeah. Yes, oh, that's exactly what 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 happened with me when I moved across to Supersport. Um, everyone was like, "Yeah, but doesn't make sense. You've been doing Soccer Zone, and millions of people have been watching you do the show, and here yeah, the subscription is is so low." It doesn't make any sense. And so like, okay, great. Mm. I'm all for challenges. Like, for me, as long as there's oxygen and life, my friend, we, we've got a gig that's going to happen and we're going to turn the tables around. We went that side. Guess what happened? We had a Monday night show. Extra time. Mm. Had more viewers on that pay-per-view yeah. than what is happening on the free to air. If the, the product is good. If the product is good. Yeah. And that is what Fresh is talking about. When people are saying that I'm willing to take a bullet for you. People right. say I'm going to buy a dish because you're now moving across. Mm. Whatever that dish is, whether it's the lower package, higher package, I'm going to get into this thing called DSTV for the See? first time. Because I am following wherever you're going, whatever you were dishing up for us there. If that's going to continue where you're going... We are with you. And, and people this, went and bought. This is now the receiver for all of it. Absolutely. 100%. Radio, for television, for movies, for series, for whatever you're looking for, right? It's all on here now. I this think is the what key, people are looking for. Key boils down to one thing in all of th- what you've said, all of you, and I'm listening. Putting enough work and planning, pre- preparation. Marawa used to arrive for a six o'clock show at five, an hour before. But that hour, he was somewhere else where people can still see that this man is preoccupied on this show. Listen, there were and times I, where I didn't him, know. He was so busy. I didn't even know how. There were the three, four, five Robert Morales because it was impossible. He was on television at the same I'm time trying as to tell on radio. You. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I, 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 I did a show on Friday night between 7 and 10, but between 9 and 10, I'll be on TV live. But what happened on radio between 9 and 10, we were pre-recording all those links. So the same thing, people don't follow you because of your name. People follow you because they appreciate the fact that you put a lot of work into your craft. When somebody opens a mic, it's not because he's favored over the other. People just say, ah, but this one is Cloudy's boy. I prepared for my show. I will start planning my show wherever. There's not a single country I've traveled and I will not arrange studios and pay for them myself. Mm. I, I do it till now. I they say, stopped I, you from playing gospel music on yeah, a Monday. On a Monday. And yet that was the most popular thing ever. So um, why was your creative juices stopped? Because you were bringing the unconventional radio on a Monday. research will tell you right now that of all the, the top 10 things people want on air, gospel is either second or third. There you go. Mm-hmm. Always. There in and it's in that, our so, market. So, yeah. so, so the reason why these names, there's a drought on radio, or people still say, oh, I like what you did five years ago. People will follow us because of the amount of work we put into our show. We don't just wake up and get to a studio just start talking. and just start talking. Yeah. I can arrive five minutes late for my show, but I've been planning it for two hours. Mm. I've been talking to my producer back and forth. We've been arguing about what I'm going to talk about. So when you switch on that mic, people think, he just arrived now. You've been thinking. You've been planning. What I'm doing now, I've been planning it for the past 12 months. I went into creating Touch HD, and I realized that, you know what, live streaming online, I don't think is the way to go. How do we remodel? Go and invest into visual, a motion picture. And now you're getting the best guys who can do videos. You get the guys who can do directing. But if the product is not well-researched and you're not putting work into it, 
you'll think, oh, people are following me, they're going to follow me because my name is Fresh. No. That's I'm sure enough. Fresh is already that planning is his enough. show today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Fresh is already planning for his first show today. And that's why people don't get, don't understand. I've seen some of you guys, how you put your work, how passionate you are to a point where you fight with your own producers because I did it too. Beverly and Robert will literally fight and I'm saying, she's not coming to work tomorrow. Yeah, but that that, that's, that that for me is the turning point, Touch, and I'm glad you mentioned it because it's about the hard work, Gareth. The the, the one thing people who want to talk these easy social media topics and hashtags oh of, op of open up the media, etc. What's uh, trending now? You know, do not understand. Yeah, that nobody here had somebody who opened up the media for them. Mm -hmm. Everybody had to follow their passion and their hard work and their dedication. It's about those late nights. So when somebody switches on and talks about the Republicans and the Democrats and what is happening, you know, who's Boris Johnson? Half the people that are on radio would have no idea who Boris Johnson is. They'll probably think that it's Boris Becker used to play tennis. So <laughs> the, the, the bottom line is the amount of work that you put in is why the people, again to quote from Tato, are willing to take the bullet for you. Because they... Mm -hmm. They appreciate the hard work. They hear the hard work. Mm. They feel the hard work mm. when you when they're driving in their cars, when they're listening, and they're saying, you know what, I've been parked outside my house now for the past hour. My wife is getting worried. Mm. Maybe I'm jollying with somebody because I can't mm. get out the car. Mm. I am so fixated with what you guys are saying on air that it is the most wonderful thing. Please let the show carry on. And that, for me, is the, is the thing. The, the biggest differentiator is... People want shortcuts. Yes. People want a shortcut to where Touch is in terms of popularity, to where Smoo is in popularity, in terms of where Fresh is in popularity, in terms of where you've been, Gareth, and where you still are now. But you've put in the hard work. But nobody, even at, at, at 702, when you had just one hour hmm. to make a difference and you were as controversial as you hell. You made the best. You made the radio. 60 minutes of radio yeah. at I 702. Mean, I, I, I still remember clips that you did of you know, imitating a Danny Jordan or imitating all sorts of crazy people. But you put in the hard work and that is what people don't understand. You don't beautify yourself or you don't worry about the external. No one cares about that on radio. Work hard and you will see the faith in the people. In, in, in fact, but I want to ask a quick question, guys. Yeah. Please, because I'm raising two boys and I like how they consume media today. Um, there's talent and there's new way of how media is being consumed, right? What do we then do um, if we say this is how radio should be, but there's this new generation of people who say, we like trap music. We don't like lyrics and hip hop. We like trap. Do we change our delivery to trap? Do we change you know, your clock, when they used to teach us the quarter hour maintenance Yeah, how much pressure? Radio. That's a really good question, we, especially for you, Fresh, because you've gone from so many different platforms. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt that's all, us. That's all right. But, mm. like, you've gone from, you know, Y, which had its own field. Sure. And you kind of, in those days, you probably would have fitted in with Y's field, but you've developed your own now. Do you feel mm. pressured to change? Like, you'll do a gig, maybe, and you'll see 20-year-olds. Mm. And In fact, it's weird. Um, the other day, I was playing at an under-18s party. And, and I do a lot of those purely for research purposes. I just want to point out, Spoo's given up and is going for the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be a decoration. And, and, and the weird thing at this under-18 party I was doing is yeah. a friend of mine from high school was dropping a 16-year-old. Uh -oh. And we were laughing about the fact that they thought when I wanted to be a DJ in high school, they thought it was a passing phase. <laughs> and, and we were just laughing about that. And, and for me, it's because I live eat and breathe radio and understand that you need to adapt all the time. Right. Mm, I could right. do youth radio until I'm 100 mm. because I know the market. Wow, if you know your so audience, yeah. you cannot not deliver to whomever you're speaking to. I like that. Yeah. The minute you know who you're talking to, mm. you, you can't go wrong. It's a done deal. And, and it does Don't, help as well when you're a talent that is traveling almost every weekend. Right. Because yeah, you, you are with the, the audience, you're, right? You're in the audience, yeah. I always thought that was really important, like to get out there and do this stuff. Um, I never really thought I was a DJ, like Fresh is a DJ, you know. Um, but it was important for me to meet the audience that I was talking to and to hear from them because they always hear from you. Yes. But you need to it hear so from true. them. It's so true. It helps. Let, let, let me just come in here quickly. One of my amazing radio moments I've had in my career was 
when a guy called Kabelo Tibedi walked into the Department of Home Affairs with a toy gun. Mm. Wanting because, an ID. Yeah, because yes. it was hot for I it. stayed in the car. I, I was that. late for a meeting because Boo was on the radio. I was the negotiator. Kid. Yes. And at the time, we didn't know that the gun was a toy gun. Yeah. I literally thought somebody's going to die or somebody's going to get shot. So radio played that moment where I had to play the negotiator. I'm sure. not trained, but I played that part so well that I calmed the situation down. And then later on in the news on television, we found out it was actually a toy gun. Mm. But that's the importance of radio. Wow. That's how much it touches people. And it's immediate. Mm. But it also Media. boils down to, this was a Kasi kid who was frustrated by the system mm. that went to home affairs with a toy gun. And he actually and called said, me. Eh? Hence I'm saying that it goes back to what I'm saying, that if you know your audience, you know which buttons to push and not to push. Yeah. For instance, if someone else, if, you know, uh, God bless his soul, if John Robbie, for instance, was speaking to that kid, <laughs> the it, outcome it might, might have been have different so well. yeah. because so relatability true. is or, everything yeah, yeah. in yeah. what we do. Yeah. If I can't relate to your story or what you're telling me, I'm not going to buy into it. So there are a bunch of people who've sent some questions. You want some questions? Yeah, whatever. Talk. No. We're here. Uh, Holofello says, much love. I would like my unborn grandkids and future generations to read about you in their history books. I mean, what would you like someone to say about the media business and your career in the history books? Uh, Rob? <laughs> Yeah, what would we'll you start think? to the left. <laughs> I mean, How convenient, you, fresh. Do, do, you ever th do you ever think about that? Because we've all seen no, people. Not at we've all. seen people come and go too. Yeah. I mean, we've seen people who we used to look up to and we used to revere, and then you know they they they, they die, uh, they 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 fade out, they end up going out to pasture and some station no one's ever heard of. Why is bra cancers not in some? Why is there no statue of him mm -hmm. outside the SABC in KZN? He was a radio god. Mm -hmm. Or just my, the street my, outside the SABC mm -hmm. in Durban named after him. My Isizulu ain't shit. I listened to Brakansas. Cyril Bongani told the radio he did. Yeah, oh. yeah 100%. I mean, you mentioned yeah. Eddie Zondi just now. Yeah, 100 you know? It's, it's exactly all of that. For, Fresh for, has, a, has, a, has a great point. Is that for the why are we doing these things? Because... I can't sit here and worry about what my legacy is going to be in terms of the history books. I don't know. There might not even be history books. It'll just be whatever it's going to be. But we, we cannot not look at guys like Cyril Kansas City Bonganim Kun. You talk about decline in radio. There's no decline in so-called Radio Zulu, Ukosi yes. FM. Mm. They've mm. been on six, yeah. seven million at mm. one stage, from day they, one. They were the biggest station in the world. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That? So there's but no guys, decline. So they're doing something right. I think guys. they still are. I, I, yeah, they, I, they're still number one. They they definitely are number one. But you know, for me, the the the, the history lies the heritage and how we try to preserve it so that it doesn't become that that the so-called bosses want it to become. I have. A we govern by the people that listen. Can I just say something here? You see, there's people like Trevor Shabalala, and I remember Evidence Camp. Treasure. God. Yeah. What we're talking about, especially I'll make fresh, for example. You expecting a coffee mug to fill up or recognize an ocean. You expecting a bathtub to fill up a dam. The people who we are under their leadership, we were too big, even from a point of character, we were too big to even expect them to acknowledge or recognize us because they don't have it in themselves to recognize themselves. We look for accolades or recognition from people who have personal deep issues that our talent can <laughs> never change. <laughs> I was in a situation where I needed to be appreciated from somebody who don't even appreciate themselves. And I had to learn that you don't benchmark what love is or appreciation because of who you're dealing with. So but they enough aren't, about not, touches relationships. No, no we're not gonna have <laughs> we're not gonna have those statues. We're not gonna have yeah. those because no, no. the people who are supposed to make that decision and talk about having tribute for Tusom Taun or having yeah. tribute for some of the greatest legends ever, they themselves in their space, those people maybe grew up not getting enough hugs 
in their childhood. Right. There are people who are in leadership position that are dealing with child molestation, deep-rooted issues, yeah. and you want to stand here and say, do you recognize me? Those people are dealing, they They're got in problems. They're in but what I will tell you, stuff that Spoo did on radio, Fresh did the, on radio, and, and Marawa that Gareth, you did, and myself, there are people whose souls change today. There are some hopes that got reignited. There are certain things that we don't know, and maybe we're never going to make. We're, not, we're never going to meet the people that we make those impact, and that's what matters for me. If I change that one person to transform his space and transform his surroundings, I did my job in radio. Whether I leave my last day after 13 years with a suitcase or my backpack that I came in the building with, and I walk out like the nobody. I know the impact was not in the building, but I made the impact outside. In life. Where it matters. Drop a mic Where it matters the most. Yeah. Mfundo, yeah. Mfundo says, if not media, what would you do? What would your other job be? I'd be dead. You'd be dead? I'd rather be in a coffin than not do what I do. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. A coffin with surround speakers. <laughs> the sound better be fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> it's Buddha. I think I'll be successful anyways. I'd be an entrepreneur. I think. You are. I think I grew up You've as been an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. No, you are. Yeah. Yeah. I was not aware. It's only now as you get older and you mature yeah. that you can see that you actually are an entrepreneur. I think I would be successful in whichever way, in, one, in another industry somehow, because I'm able to, to adapt. I think all black people are like that. Black people have been through struggles mm -hmm. and we've always survived our struggles. That's wherever, true. We, wherever you can put us, no matter how difficult it can be. Touch? I think I'm one of those, yeah. Um, I'll be making a good lager because I make good alcohol. <laughs> But I think what Fresh said is so important. I miss days, Marawa and I at some point, where the only guys will never invoice because we forgot. Yeah. We because forgot to invoice. Not about and the one invoice. day, one day I was told <laughs> that you and Marawa, you're not gonna. I'm like, what are you? Why are you telling my? Why are you telling me Marawa's salary? Because there was a point we didn't even invoice up to 400k. We forgot to claim 400k. <laughs> And people go and negotiate salary raise. We didn't invoice. We didn't know. We forgot. It's like, how do you forget to go and submit your invoice? And now SABC is complaining because they, they say they're not going to pay you. It's coming up to half a bar. And you're like, okay, I'll go on the next month because when I switch on that mic, that's, that's the biggest that's transaction. That's, yeah. Yeah. That to me fulfills me. But the truth you of the matter yeah. is I will do this. I will do what I'm doing now. I'm in motion picture. I'm making great movies. I'm making great TV content. We're transforming THD into an amazing platform for video. So, Sbu, you're right. We'll always evolve. You're always on to the next. Yeah, Robert, if you weren't doing what you're doing... Well, I mean, there's Marawa TV that's uh, just recently launched. And but deserves a home. Congrats, yeah. That's right. Congrats. Yeah, no, but you, you know, for me, the, the highlight's not even about looking at what self has done. Um, I kind of got into trouble for doing this because maybe I was not supposed to be doing it. I do a sports show. And I, I sat and I watched the, the Metro Awards and I was like, okay, this guy by the name of Wilson Bingosi, oh, has man. been on radio for 30 years. Yeah. yeah. Is there something that's going to happen at these awards to... Honor him. To honor him. And no, he was there handing out an award. Cool, no problem. Is he going to get honored? Awards came and gone. Nothing. So, put out a whole plan. Remember, I'm just a sports show. Hmm. So, i got to try now and rejig how I use my platform to honor Wilson Bingosi. Because in my mind... Like Touch is saying, it's not about the money. We went, what, nine months or something without <laughs> invoicing. Yeah. But the bottom line was that it wasn't about the money. It's about the love. And I grew mm. up listening to Wilson Bingosi. And I went and created a whole trophy in honor of him. Do the whole birthday cake with the radio on it to honor Wilson Bingosi. Trapped him to come to, I don't know what I said, was waiting for him at SABC at quarter to six. But he came through because he kind of trusted me in terms of that. And I said, no, just, just come into the studio quickly. And we had a, I had penned down a whole playlist of music that he has played. Mm. And I had recorded a whole lot of people who have had meaning in his life, including Kwas Khadebe, who was the first person that hired him mm. uh, to be at, at I at, sent at Radio Metro. Khadebe a demo. You, you know. never got back to me. Anyway, carry But on. look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, it, it was about that. You know, for me, radio is about the learnings that we have had and the, and the power that it's had. And, and you cannot not honor Wilson Bingosi when he's been in one station. You know, we're not talking about 
you know, fresh who goes to Y and to 5FM and gets, you know, fired <laughs> after a couple of months at Metro. So <laughs> Too soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm talking about somebody whose life and lifetime and whose poetry yeah. in motion is still in motion in 2019. And he, did, and, and he brought the numbers. And he brought the 100%. Yeah. Yes. And let's not move away from... So for me, you know, I can walk away from radio any day, but as little as... That was, it would have been a fireable offense, I'm sure it was, um, uh, you know, but I kind of got the support from top management to say this is what I'm uh, like, okay, fine, but I called them at quarter to six because, hey, you know, you can't <laughs> change what's, what's going to happen already. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Whatever happens now going forward, uh, I'm a lover of radio, but I think the person who deserved the biggest accolade in Wilson Binkosi got the biggest accolade and having played a part in that, that's I can beautiful. drink all this Vintok that's here. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think uh, we've we've been at it enough. I mean, I could listen to you guys all day. I think there are lots of people who so would, let's go would all say day. the same. You want to go all day? <laughs> <laughs> you got a show to start next week. You're um, still unemployed. Let's just, let's just talk about what everybody's up to. Yeah. Uh, Fresh, there's been a lot of, uh, of, of really interesting publicity around your move. I'm sure you're excited. I'm sure they're excited. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be a new chapter, some new things. You, you, you got anything to say about that? Let me tell you what said to me you've made the right decision when the ceo called me wow. two days ago and said we're not saying be offensive but i want you to go to town hmm. do what you believe radio should be in 2019 I've never had a CEO say that to me. No, Not once. The CEO of what? Called you? A prime media. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, that is the support you need to yeah. know you have as talent that we trust you enough not to interfere oh, yeah. in what you are doing. Why is it that when it's working, you want to try and fix it? I mean, we bust our balls for two years building a breakfast show. What happened in March? Oh, we must change it. Mm. What mad? That's like that. In fact, that is fucked up. I'll say it right now. That's yeah. fucked up. That it's working. The numbers show. The numbers are up there. I mean, dude, we're talking to a million people every ten minutes. Yeah. And then you want to fix it? It's not broken. Mm. What are you doing? Who hired you? Who are you? <laughs> Did it make sense to me? Spuda, uh, you're busy with with uh, Massive Metro. Yeah, we we. We are also consolidating it into a, a media company. Right. I think having Pick studied up. companies like, um, you know, Media 24, Prime Media, and just where um, broadcasting and multimedia is going, you know, we, 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 we're doing that with our platform. Uh, I think it's going to be one of the biggest in the continent over the next decade or so. It's a long road ahead, but I think it's beautiful. And, and, and talking about what I'm doing, I think from a bigger picture, and, and gentlemen in this room with the sisters that you're still going to host coming up, it is very important to, to move on to ownership. And, and, and I'll tell you why, especially with, with the type of gentlemen that are here. And I don't have any doubt that they can, they can still do, or they probably have their plans behind the scenes, I don't mm. know. But uh, it's very, very important because th what happened to us is not going to happen to our kids. And black, black people will forever keep growing in this country, especially the people that are the, the, mo you know, the majority that we speak to and everybody else. But what I want to say is let's fix the future instead of always um, having to be... Lamenting the past. Yeah, having to have mm. our destiny in right. other people's hands, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'd like to encourage everybody else to think that way because right now we can. Because, um, I, I mean, I, I was even looking at my, my drinks business. It took off because there was just this new monster... Um, Thing called social media that nobody could understand even big brands like my competitors like we took advantage of yeah like that monster <laughs> we took advantage of social media and and it grew a brand which which is still growing out there in the street so the power of technology gives all of us in this room and everybody else that's listening an opportunity to get into ownership doesn't even, you don't even have to have a lot of money i didn't mm -hmm. i didn't even spend a single cent when i started massive metro i use my own brand and leverage and in believing in myself to convince people to buy into me and partner with me and get equity into my idea and uh, we just turned three today. Beautiful. And Congratulations. I asked the, and today. I, today. And today. And Happy well, actually, birthday. on the 1st of May, yeah. Right. So Congratulations. I'm saying now we have yeah. three. Yeah. And I that. ask the question all the time, why can't we make African billionaires when we've made European billionaires for so many years? Hello. Right. Well, like, what's stopping us from supporting our own? 
because yeah. we don't support totally. again i think it, it's exactly i mean touch your, your your experiences in the us uh, would testify this there's, there's a major difference. Maybe it's also just a mindset thing. You have Ebony Magazine, which for many, many years has been able to highlight the successes of black people and black achievers, where if there's a first black female who's been to space, they are able to highlight and celebrate them without a problem. So if Michael Jordan were to pass away, Michael Jordan uh, will know that he'll rest in peace because they've already done the tribute special to him. Mm. If they had to do a tribute for Scotty Pippen, they know that that's already sorted and done. If a Richard Pryor, whatever the case might be, they know they received that, the accolades. Yeah. At least they got the they recognition got the they the recognition. Yeah. They've had the dinners and the evenings that have said we Whoever, NAACP, mm. for example, would be the great honors of black achievement. BET right. would honor all of those people. Just to say thank you. What does it take to say thank you to a person? It takes nothing. Make them feel good. Make sure. them feel special for that moment, for that night. And then we can all pack our bags and go. But you've done your bit. Muhammad Ali passed away at the time that he did. He didn't have to worry because America had taken yeah. care of honoring him multiple times over because, yeah, he mm. was the greatest. But we have a problem in this country to declare a sbu as being great or a fresh as being great or a touch as being great because, yeah, okay, I can fight. And the biggest irony is it's the people that most shaped our popular culture that die the poorest. Yeah, How does that make that sense? Always, that's How does that make sense? Sickening. We shouldn't let that happen in our time. I, I refuse. It, it shouldn't happen. I, I, but why not? How, I, how, how do we stop you know the touch? It, you know how it starts, Marawa? You posted a video in Egypt. I was sleeping. Somebody said, yo, check your Twitter. Marawa just gave you a shout out. You were walking past this <laughs> truck and you took a video of this truck with the big number 48. Yeah. And you <laughs> said, touch is the shipment of 48 now coming into Egypt. <laughs> and, and, and that moment, you are in the middle of Cairo. But you see a number and you see it as, a, as an opportunity to acknowledge what your brother is doing, big or small. You acknowledge what your brother is doing. Now, mm. that video, we know what it did. It breaks down the perception that Touch will never support Fresh. Or Touch that we're all jealous of each other. Yeah, I get this yeah. all the time. Like, it, it, like it people, people think that, that, that uh, Spoo's There's jealous beef. of Touch uh, and uh, yes. Fresh is jealous and of it's me not, and I'm jealous that, of Robin. We wouldn't be sitting around this table. Yeah, yeah, and man. let me tell you something. Gareth, you planted a seed. You might think this was a conversation. You have planted a seed in breaking down walls of uh, unnecessary tension that exists between ordinary people. Mm -hmm. Because if people of our caliber can sit around here... Everybody can. And we're comfortable... I believe everybody can because it's in the name of perfecting. Everybody should. We should at, at some point, we wanted industry. to buy YFM. Remember after we left? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't see any reason why that still can't happen. And not necessarily buying YFM. <laughs> I really would love to work with you gentlemen. A station. A sta I would love for all of us a, to be in one a, business. I think there's a deal going down right now. Because we've got a... <laughs> <laughs> I think there's but, an but, 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 honest, but, but here, here it is. Here I want to work let with me everyone you, in this let room. Let me ask you something. The five of us, including some highly esteemed ladies Sisters, out there, yeah. okay, who will still come on board. We can walk tomorrow into PIC. Any, any agency. Hold on a second. Into PIC or Treasury hmm. and say, the 3.2 3 billion that you pay to bail institutions, give us half of it. <laughs> in 48 <laughs> months, no, in 24 months, hmm. not only will we pay you back, but with the experience and the mistakes we've made, we'll be able to develop skills, create jobs, and pay you back. Nice. And have academies I, yeah, of how to bring up yeah. I don't know if we, I don't know if we want. The, I, don't, I don't know if we want the, the taxpayer to fund us. We must do this on, its on our own. I really think we it's can. Like, mm, I really do think. Let's we can. do. If you're doing good business, it'll. Yeah, you know. I really so, do think we can. But I hear you. I mean, mm. you're you're right about the fact that there's there's opportunity. But I want to hear. Before we close off, just what you're up to and, so, and what you want so what you want to tell people. Hundred percent. So tomorrow I'm at the Houghton Hotel. Uh, I have an incredible group of young people that come out of GFC. GFC has been sitting with over eight hundred CVs a year. These are qualified after graduates, guys who come out of great film institutions and they end up working in news desk of SABC or other companies, but you have a skill mm. to shoot a Black Panther. So I sat there and I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We need to find a way to create an incubation platform where these guys don't end up being in the right, in the wrong places. So we're launching THD24 tomorrow. 
it will still have podcast platform as the first offering of Touch HD, but we're going to have a lot of local content that we've shot. Mm. So I took a detour and I started learning more about local TV when I joined Soweto TV. So by the way, I never made the announcement. I was asked to be a member of the board. So I just joined Soweto TV just to understand because local content is, is incredible. And we think local content is what we see on SABC One, but Mzanti has actually showed us that there is big appetite for great local stories. Mm. So that's what we're creating. And I'll be working with uh, Unpolished Diamonds in creating content. And the more catalog we have of local amazing content, I think the more we're going to help for people to feel good about themselves because they can now be portrayed as, not just as Abos Tumo, who I thought he owned Scooty's Nice mm. and oh, Chicken Licken and, and, and died poor. Oh, by the you way, know? he was smart, that gentleman, in case you didn't know. I had an interview with him before. He, he, he was smart, on. but he died very poor. I don't know that. But I do know that um, a lot of the decisions that he made when he was, big, even with the Dorsey Icemans mm. ads, even with the Chicken Licken ads, he had yeah. royalties. And he was one of the smartest. He actually owned um, and he had royalties as a writer. And even though he didn't own it, the right. is nice, he was getting good royalties out of it. So he was but, one of the smartest guys mm. way before time. But but under yeah, the smart SA- contracts, but, 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 everything. But, 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 yeah. but under yeah. the SABC, you wouldn't have um, the type of deal where, you know, a portion of what you bring in comes to you. I mean, otherwise, you know, We'd all have, Fresh would have landed all have on it. In, in, in fact, <laughs> why don't you have a revenue share options ah, or contracts that say that? We're not gonna because you the... know the value you bring. Says yeah. the guy, they know says the, the guy value who could bring. still, because you said you hadn't signed yet, so you go and renegotiate. That, that was my contract. <laughs> that was my contract. What makes you think it's not in the contract? It definitely <laughs> is. With Fresh, definitely <laughs> Shareholding. is. I, I, I had that contract when I went back to I from Ukos. Yes. Not only add revenue, I said if I increase the listenership pair that percentage, my salary goes up pair right. that percentage either uh, as well. Mm. But not only that, I also got them to um, to split with me revenue on my radio show. And Canton gave me that deal. Mm. And that deal went on well. Mm. And I was there for two, two extra years. So if you believe in your brand enough, you can be able to pull off those types of deals. Mm. Tell us about Marawa TV. It's, it's crazy. I went to Egypt solely because Optimize had asked me to come and do a breakfast event for Brand SA. So we were there. The ambassador was there. You know, Egypt was there. And I was supposed to then come back to South Africa. Attended a couple of games. The great Kalusha Boilia, mm-hmm. great friend of mine. Um, he was like, no, we got a couple of tickets, VIP. Let's go sit and watch a few games. Great. So now, you know, the broadcaster in me, cannot be a VIP. So I'm not used to this. I'm yes. remember all my life I'm I'm, I'm anchoring the pitch. in the studio. Pitch. Yeah. You know, I'm doing the AFCON in studio. I'm either on the pitch or whatever. So that in me was just like I'm feeling fidgety now, you know. So I got my phone and I'm like, hmm, there's Daniel the Bula Mukachi, greatest Nigerian player. There's Ramele Twake who is there. Chesa. Let me flip Seize this. the moment. Let me flip yeah. this. <laughs> Let me flip this camera. Let me go to these guys and let us go chat to these guys because it doesn't make sense for me. I'm not used to just sitting there, oh, wonderful, or yes. get a drink. And I kind of got to work when I'm right. supposed to be not working. You know, I'm supposed to be enjoying my unemployment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that is how I started. <laughs> then I came back to, to SA and I did you know, the, the the radio part of it. And uh, the guys are like, okay, great. You know, because it's, it's, it's also my leave that I usually take on radio. But then I didn't take leave. I was I was wanting to come back. I wanted to do the radio show from Egypt. And the guys were like, do more of these Marawa moments, which I did. And I was like, okay, great. When I get to Egypt, we're going to do a whole link up and I'm going to broadcast my radio show from there. And, you know, so obviously that didn't happen. But, you know, Marawa TV happened. Right. And, you know, and, and the mm. growth of it now is just something where you sit back and you're saying, Phew, the yep. demands, now the expectations, now the improvements, now the quality of the camera work that has to come in, now the improvement and the quality of the audio has to come in because it's going to be a product that is going to be sellable. It's sure. going to be a product that's not just going to be for here. If CNN are like, hey, we need to, uh, okay, cool, mm. here, yeah, yeah, right. take and, and use... And, and, and that is where we are now. I mean, we had a massive workshop again today and we discussed, uh, you know, the way forward. And um, it's just truly amazing 
the growth of it, the demand of it, the uh, the welcoming nature of it. I mean, had a great chat with Benny McCarthy. I quickly went to Cape Town. Terrible weather. So you move from 45 degrees to hmm. 5 degrees there. Um, <laughs> got another great interview. I mean, I can't really disclose now, but maybe next week, uh, you know, which will be a big interview for me, for Marawa TV. And... Um, we, we we keep grinding, as I said. For me, the strength, only, the only thing you, bro. you know, the only thing that will stop this machinery from going <laughs> is lack of oxygen. And so, yeah. and let's yeah. uh, as, let's, as long as there's oxygen, all, we're having fun. Let's all agree. I think that we also need to start exporting what we're doing because there's appetite for what we do in the rest of the world, yeah, sure, yeah. and especially on this continent. And there are plenty of people who are taking their cue from you, gentlemen. So I look forward to our next conversation. It is a, a great. So are we pleasure. doing this once a month? I think so. We could. So when are the girls here? Because I'd love to I, hear the girls. You, you're, welc- you're welcome to come. We'll, no, we'll go sit in the audience. We'll get that we'll organized. Audience. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, I, can, I can tell you, um, the sponsors are keen. I'm sure that we will be, be doing a few of these. And I, I really appreciate you pioneers all being part of this. Um, I have the world of respect for all of you. And thank you for being here for, for tonight's session. I know you've got busy things, busy lives. Uh, there are many My, myself and Robert are recently unemployed, so we're, we're good. Ah, please, for so short a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fresh, you're on air from August, from the 1st? Uh, from the 1st of August, yes. Okay. Uh, Josie, there's a new mayor in town, and uh, yes, yeah, stand Very up. Very nice. Thank Four you so seven. much. I, I think I, I need to say this one, Fresh, you know, I, I always tell you. I yes, write sir. about it in my books. I always have to remind you. Thank you, bro. No, yeah. man. Thank you, man. I got Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I got you. For where I am today, and I look at myself, and I remember that little boy that... You came and embraced on your show to even mm. become a judge. Yeah, um, yeah, and just he used to judge uh, DJ competitions on my show. So and just the opportunities that you gave me, yeah. and you, you'd allow me to come with you to gigs. And Kabzela did the same thing. Fedjo did the same thing. Root Boy did the same thing. So I always just want to always remind you, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Love thank you, man. You. Thank you so much, guys. This is a, a special a broadcast. It's pure. I want to say thank you, Robert ah. Marawa. You know what? That's wrong. I'm like, come on, please somebody get it, Robert. Robert, I want, please, I want, please, I want to thank you. I want, to, I want the world to know right now. Do you know how I feel when people ask me where you live? I say same, same place as Robert. We neighbors. That's yes. my address now. So, Robert, I want to thank you for being my neighbor on. SABC platform and be my neighbor literally in real life. In life. Yeah. I'm, but I'm, most I'm, significantly, I'm, I'm, yeah. this gentleman here, um, he is the sacrificial lamb. He had to dive into the pool first to know that yes, it's sir. possible, yes, not sir. just to swim, but to hit some backstroke. So shout out to you, Gareth, because we had to learn to survey the land through how you tread and you're doing it with resilience. You're doing it at, to such an extent that not only did you you know you're going to make disrupt, him cry right he didn't just disrupt <laughs> but it's he's telling yeah. so right. now because because of Gareth if you are suspended for more than two weeks you know you got an option <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen thank you so much no thank but may all. we but may we add to what uh, Touch is saying though yeah. I think because I think we, we we often don't pay enough homage to you mm. for being the pioneer that you became because yeah. a lot of people thought you were batshit crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. and and I know for a fact that it wasn't always smooth sailing. Mm. And and more often than not, the first three, four, five years are uh, when it's actually the Musunuries. But if nobody says it to you yeah. enough times, we see you, bro. Mm. Yeah. And we appreciate what you've done, the sacrifices, uh, the uh, risking disappearing into obscurity because this is what you believe in well and i and i batted for you the the one time when it was you all batted for me when i was in when i was against our more mutual enemy yeah 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 and they they wanted to take me down you all came out to bat for me i will (laughs) never forget that i am i'm in your debt forever yo i didn't know it was gonna be like that to protect this man on that thing (laughs) 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 i was like the man's side And they came on me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they, will, they will come for all of us. Right, You're waiting you for your name to be called. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> your body shaking with this feeling. But you never, <laughs> never, ever. <laughs> Wait for it before. That's how old you guys are. <laughs>
Not for nothing. Thank you very much. Reload that. Oh, man. I think Ted Chogan knows Tevin Campbell, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you oh, to Vincent. Man, Thank you. What a time. <laughs> For a minute. <laughs> can I, I want to know your name? <laughs> and then we this find out Tim is gay. Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and that his real surname is Kambule. <laughs> Oh, Thank you guys. Oh, Thank you. Man. Thank you very much to Vinto. Thank, Thank you, you to you for joining Thank us you. this evening. I hope you've uh, been entertained. These uh, yeah, guys will no, da- da- no doubt be back and we'll have oh, another man. episode of this with the ladies who have very much missed this evening. And uh, Joe, shout out to Fat Joe who yep. couldn't be here. He wanted to be here and we'll have him on. Shout out so, to the audience. Please give yes, him some mic. Audience, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I you, think everybody. Cliff Central is the only place with a live studio <laughs> audience. Do you remind me of uh, Sanford and Son? I was like, why are their voices <laughs> laughing in the background? What is that? This is cliffcentral.com. All right, very nice. Thank you.